It's Purple Daily on Score North and ScoreNorth.com. <gasps> Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. Hey, you held him to 20 points, man. Yes, you gave us a chance at the end. But I got three words for you. You like that? Yeah! <laughs> That's uh, Kirk Cousins uh, addressing the Vikings before the last mandatory minicamp. They were, they were very excited <laughs> to get that new offense installed. Kevin O'Connell in the house here. This is Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. Phil Mackey, Judd Zolgad, our executive producer, Declan Goff. And the show is presented by Surly Brewing Company and also TCL. Redefine creativity with the TCL 30V 5G smartphone Enjoy blazing fast 5G speed, an AI-powered 50-megapixel triple camera system, ultra-realistic and true-to-life visuals powered by Next Vision and booming sound from dual speakers. Learn more at TCL.com. All right, boys, we just completed Judd's. We did five straight days of Judd's Top 25 Vikings of all time. You can find all of that if you missed any of those episodes on the Purple Daily podcast feed and YouTube channel. And then we will collect our list of snubs for Monday's episode. I'm already thinking on a bunch of them. But today's all about listener feedback. It's Purple Daily Reads the Comments, where we dive into the comment section of YouTube, Twitter, and anything you guys send us from the feedback section of the Score North app. So uh, let's start with this one, boys. Uh, Dimitri Riskinski via the Score North app says, Sue and Treader would be awesome additions, but hear me out. What about Linval Joseph and Kyle Rudolph coming back as depth? They could add depth in two positions that need it. Just a thought. What do you think about bringing a couple a couple Mike Zimmer era Vikings back for some depth defensively and offensively? Joseph wants to come back. He's back in town. I think Doogie told us that his uh, son or daughter's in high school here. He's definitely been working out in town. Now, when they let go of him, he had de- definitely declined. And, of course, I think he spent the last couple of years with the Chargers. So I don't know where his game is at. Would I consider that one? Yes, I would. Rudolph, no way. I'm not bringing him back. Uh, and I, I think he told a KFAN, if I'm not mistaken, that, of course, he would be open to coming back. But here, here's my question. Um, you're pretty set at tight end, it feels like, right? You've got... I think you're you're skewing your offense towards how you want it to operate and run, right? Kyle's older. He would come in and and he doesn't really like to he's not really a blocker. He wants to catch the ball, but when he catches the ball, now he's going to gain about 3 yards. Um I would be more open to Joseph depending on where his game is at. Kyle to me is a guy who look, great viking. You tell him it's been great, but I would not consider him coming back. Yeah, I like the idea of bringing back Linval. I mean, I'm all for a, another big big guy in the defensive line that can help beef things up. I just don't think Kyle has anything really left. And and I know they're they're weak at tight end right now. You know, behind Irv Smith, things could get a little dicey. But I don't know if Kyle Rudolph really does anything for me at this point in his career. I don't think it would add any value to, Ke- to Kevin O'Connell's, uh, O'Connell's offense. Um, So just Linval Joseph, yeah, he has spent the last... Uh, ch- ch- two years with the Chargers. Not nearly the same player he was, according to Pro Football Focus anyways. I mean, he was one of the best defensive linemen in the league. He's not not quite Aaron Donald level, but he was like a, a second-tier interior defensive lineman between you know 2014, 15 when they signed him until the last couple of years. Could, could I see him playing a few hundred snaps here and there, just plugging up some space in the middle? Yeah, I don't know. They need some depth. I'd be fine with that. My question about Rudolph would be, Who's the backup to the guy that just missed the season last year? Right now. Like, I mean, I know they signed uh, Judd's favorite tight end. Uh, what's his name? Who's caught Johnny like five Munt. passes? Johnny, Johnny Munt. Munt. Johnny Munt. Okay. Who's he? And Johnny Munt literally has like 30 receptions dating back to the beginning of college. He's not a pass catching tight end to this point in his football life. So, who's catching passes? Irv Smith missed the whole year last year. Should be healthy, but they don't have anyone to catch passes. I'm not saying you got to play Kyle Rudolph for you know half the snaps like they used to when Irv Smith was drafted, but right. But keep, keep in mind though, O'Connell's coming from a system where I think Irv Smith would be considered like, uh, oh, we we can use him, but they're going to use a lot of three receiver sets, so the tight end's not as important here. Like if Irv Smith, but what gets if he hurt, gets hurt? If Irv Smith gets hurt, KJ Osborne's probably going to just play more, and Munt will block. That's my point. Is Kyle would be, I think, draft. 
or signed if he came back here more as a blocking option as well. And I think I think the peak of what he could do in catching passes is done now. So I don't know what he would really bring to you. Uh, by the way, he did play in in 16 games last season for the Giants. He was targeted 39 times, only 26 catches for 257 yards, one touchdown. So actually, Rudolph once was a really good red zone target, just a guy oh, that you could rely fantastic. on about once every other game to, to catch a touchdown pass. Yep. And uh, the last two years, his last year in Minnesota, and then last year with the Giants, he's played in 28 games. He has two touchdowns total. Yep. Now maybe, I don't know, I wasn't watching crappy Giants football last year. Was some of that just lack of opportunity? Maybe they weren't using him in the red zone? I don't know for sure. But red zone targeting would be the the number one thing I'd be looking for. I'm, I don't know that I need Kyle Rudolph plodding along at age 33 between the 20s, but if he's a guy that can get a couple big hands up there in the back of the end zone three or four times a year, you know, they might need someone like that. Thielen, he's going to be your guy. Well, but Thielen was was doing that when Rudolph was here too. So, but I'm just, but I'm just saying, I think, I think if Irv Smith can max out and be great, that's fantastic. If Irv Smith gets hurt, I think you're you're uh, you're probably going to see a lot more three receiver sets: Jefferson, Thielen, Osborne. I don't know how much of a um, a role in the passing game and reception wise, the tight end is going to play if Irv Smith does not play a lot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jake T via the score North app says a couple thoughts I had lately, just reflecting back on Vikings history. Do you guys believe we could have made the Super Bowl with a healthy Sam Bradford in 2017? Mm-hmm. Imagine the Vikings in their first wow. Super Bowl in franchise history at us bank stadium, purple and gold confetti falling while Prince's purple rain plays over the speakers. 2009 hurt like hell, but we absolutely pulled. <laughs> oh my God. I'll read it. We absolutely pulled an Amber Heard in 2017 Whoa. and crapped the bed. <laughs> so many questions about that story that I won't ask right now. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> well, they went 13-3 and three without Sam Bradford. I mean, I like Bradford a lot. Um, Keenum, though, I, you know, this is a great question because Keenum had that magical year, right? And like mm-hmm. he he ultimately brought an air of of I'm going to do my thing and and it was successful. Would Bradford have brought that? Like Bradford had a great arm and Bradford was was healthy, really good. But there was something that worked with Case as well. So I don't know the answer to that question is yes. Here's my question. The Saints game, okay? Let's say the Saints lead as they did late in that game. Does Bradford pull off the miracle? Because that was a very Keenum-like play, and I would not suggest trying to repeat that play. So I'm well, not saying. Well, well would they have had a bigger? Lead? Off? Yeah, I actually think there's a few questions that kind of even I lead up this. to that. Which is, let's let's go back to my first question. Would they have won more than 13 games with Sam Bradford? Which I think is really hard to say, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm He's a better quarterback than Keenum, but would they have gone fourteen and two? Because they needed one more win to play a home game in the NFC Championship game. So that's my first question: Is can we can we not play that game in Philadelphia so that when the wheels come off, it just escalates with a backup quarterback? Ultimately, they lost here to Detroit, correct? Here to Detroit uh, at Pittsburgh, at Pittsburgh and then at Carol and then at Carolina, like week fifteen. That was kind okay. of the dagger of them not getting the one. So, so would Sam Bradford have brought them to 14 wins? Okay, let's say it's it's unlikely. Yeah. Um, and then okay, so you're playing a road game now after you beat the Saints. And maybe the maybe the answer to your question, Judd, is would Sam Bradford have had the Vikings score 30 points in that game and they don't have to worry about a miracle at the end? I don't know. But the the, the biggest question is if the season plays out similarly and then you get into that game in Philadelphia. Would Sam Bradford have provided more offensive power when the Eagles were pushing back to make that a shootout game, or would you still have just gotten smoked? I think I you think know? this question is more like valid if the Vikings went nine and seven and lost in the wild card round. Then I think it's more of a conversation of do they win more games? Probably. Do they have a better fate in the playoffs? Probably. But I mean, we took we got they got to the doorstep of the NFC of of the Super Bowl in the NFC Championship game. I will say in terms of all of the project or reclamation projects of quarterbacks they have brought in, easily 
Sam Bradford was the most talented of all those guys they have brought in between Keenum's and the Matt Castles. I know Gus Farratt was up there in age, but in terms of all those reclamation projects, I don't put Far as a reclamation project. Like, but in terms he actually kind of was. He kind of, at, at 39, <laughs> he was. Surgery. But, yeah. but in terms of like, you know, the J feed, like they always brought in or drafted these random dudes. But Sam Bradford was a former number one overall pick and was insanely talented. Dude just mm-hmm. had terrible knees and shoulders. I think the problem with with this whole conversation is this the defense got done so badly in philadelphia that it's hard to like put it on like keenum came unglued to a certain point for sure but the reality is that defense which by the way played a huge role in carrying that team to 13 wins like that defense had been great they got it's starting with the second half of the saints game here and then certainly in the uh, conference title game they got done so badly. They got beat up so badly. They got humiliated that it's hard to me to look back at one one offensive component and be like, could that guy have changed? That? Yeah. Because you were, if you had gone into Philadelphia and given up 17 or 20 or something, right? You'd be like, okay, the offense should, should have done more, could have done more, and it failed you. But starting with what Sean Payton did to that defense in the second half of the Saints game, it was like, what the hell is going on here? Yeah, yeah, it's it's fun to look back. It's uh, there's a few of those. We've done those too. The the alternate realities. We could bring some of those back at some point. Uh, bad dad joke via the Scorn North app says, "Love to hear that you're warming up to Cam Dantzler as a starting cornerback. He was our our cornerback number one by a mile last year. I do have an issue with the boneheaded play that's often falsely used against him. That I thought I should point out. If you go back and listen to Alex Boone on Purple Daily." He breaks down that last play against Detroit and puts the blame primarily on Woods. Xavier Woods bailed on his inside coverage to trail a guy that was already double covered, leaving Dantzler out to dry. That's a fair point. I think the general point here is that Cam Dantzler is better, I think, than people think. And maybe that'll come to fruition more this season. Uh, Tyler Gould via the Scornerth app says, Love your guys' shows. Y'all are realistic about Minnesota sports. I can't stand the constantly overly optimistic people who refuse to think anything but perfection will happen. Listen to y'all every day. Would love to have this question answered. Do you think Kendricks and Dalvin Cook will be on the Vikings for the 2023 season? Oh. I think in 23, I think Kendricks won't be. Unless he comes back and plays great. He'd have to sign um, a new contract probably. Yeah, his- I think he's probably gone. Um, I think that Dalvin Cook is back. I think Dalvin Cook is back. I don't know how much... Longer after 2023, Cook is going to be here. But I think that Cook, if he, and this is the huge if, if he can stay on the field in 22, I think he is going to be sitting on potentially a really good year in which he is going mm-hmm. to become, in which he's going to become uh, um, the type of asset that he should be, which is not just the bell cow, give him the ball, but he's going to get the ball through the pass game. He's going to be uh, obviously rushing the ball as well. Kendricks, I think, is a much longer shot to be back. So Cook's contract... Starting in 2023 is a lot easier to get out from underneath. A lot of the dead cap money is paid off by that point. <clears throat> Excuse me. So his cap hit goes up from 12 million this year to 14 million, but the dead cap is only six. So you could actually save like eight million dollars to the 2023 cap by cutting him. My guess is it's just a kind of a, it's a point where you would either either trade him for probably not a first round pick, but whatever, or you'd restructure him to bring that number down. I wouldn't be shocked if he was a Viking for life. If he, unless he plays contractual hardball, which, God, he's going to be twenty-seven. It's it's so hard to play hardball as a running back when you're at that age. Right. Just sad to say because it's not like he's been in the league for that long. Right. So I, I think you're right. Kendrick's probably gone in his thirties. Contract is up, and then uh, maybe Dalvin is still sticking around on a different contract. Uh, Felipe chimes in via the Score North app and says, "I've been wanting to reach out for quite some time. I am a Brazilian Vikings fan." I started watching the NFL just seeing Super Bowls when I was younger, and then I also watched some playoffs until I decided to pick a team myself and watch every damn game possible because I was loving football. So I decided to watch some games of a team I always saw on How I Met Your Mother, and I've never watched that show, but apparently Marshall on that show is a big Vikings fan. Yep. You guys watch that show? Jason Segal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately for me, it was in 2017 and the oh. season that Case Keenum ended up with the Minneapolis Miracle to Stefan Diggs, et cetera, et cetera. 
Uh, but I can't complain. I've been suffering and watching 500 football for only five years. Judd probably hasn't even doesn't even have a soul anymore after so many years of Vikings football. <laughs> Nonetheless, just want to give you a shout out. I've uh, been listening for three or four years on Spotify almost daily. You are my top podcast with hundreds of hours of listens yearly from the uh, Spotify review. That's awesome, man. Thank you. Felipe from Brazil showing some love there. Uh, our guy Lawyer Chase chimes in via the Scorner app. I noticed that Surly makes more than just beer. Interestingly, Surly has a whiskey named after their cornerstone beer, Furious. Question for Judd. Any possible updates on whiskey production from Surly or any future promotions of some type? on liquors from surly yeah i don't know about um i don't know about the second part of that question but i will say this i have sampled the the surly that he is talking about the furious um it is fantastic and i'm not a a big liquor guy but it is absolutely great but i think that i think those are offshoots so i don't think that they're like in production of of different liquors necessarily uh, but yeah, that is a that is a heck of a beer. Um, nice, there you go. That's mm-hmm. a good way to talk about like Surly fun. in the middle of the episode. I like there, fun. I like our listeners <laughs> teeing us up for that stuff. Uh, also, great. a shout out to our friends at the Meadows of Mystic, providing a nice track for those of you this summer that want to get out and you know, shoot a hundred like Declan does. Yeah, shoot one and one hundred five, <laughs> one ten, maybe even who knows? Uh, whatever you want to shoot. Go down to the Meadows at Mystic Lake. Uh, and they also have some golf lessons. They can help you break 100 consistently. I've broken 100 a few times, but I'm trying to break 100 mm-hmm. consistently. And I should book a tee time and book a lesson down at the Meadows at Mystic Lake. And so should you. They have a full-service golf apparel shop as well. They have the Meadows Bar and Grill Deck, which is a great scenic area to enjoy a beverage before or after your round. Go check them out. Book your tee time now. Golfthemeadows.com to learn more. Golfthemeadows.com. All right, let's uh, keep rolling here. Lloyd Heim via the Scorn North app says, I find it so interesting that the younger generation doesn't realize how good some of the older Vikings players were in their positions. Uh, the teams that played outside at the old Met Stadium, they called it the Frozen North for a good reason. All Vikings fans need to dig up old film of the Vikings in action to get perspective. Joe Cap knocks out Jack Youngblood, a linebacker, in a playoff game at the Met. Football, he says. Football. We'll hit you with that. Football. Been a Vikings fan since day one, 1961. Yeah, do you notice that as the sports dad of the show, that the Declans and the Phils and the the younger generation just doesn't quite give the same respect and love to older players that maybe we should? I think it depends on the fan, so I don't think that's fair to say across the board. I do think that there are fans that don't care as much, but um, I also think that, and this is actually a credit to the Wilfs, I feel like the Wilfs, have done a really good job and and by extension now the entire franchise of embracing the past the red year sort of forgot about the past like they didn't really showcase you know alumni they didn't really i don't think bring back players they do now and i think that that gives the current fan base a much better appreciation and feel but i don't think it's fair to say young people don't care about the old teams i think some folks do uh but i think it's just a personal thing i think some 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 people who became fans when Moss joined the team looked back and said, oh, there's a rich history here. This is great. Some fo- some said, I don't care about it. Uh, but just to make a blanket statement, I don't think it's fair. Well, you build an emotional attachment to the things that you grow up sure. watching and connecting with or listening to, right? I mean, the, the your favorite music is probably the music you listen to between the ages of 12 and 22. You know, yep. your favorite TV shows of all time are probably the TV shows you watched between when you were 10 and 20, somewhere in there. Sure. I mean, I was scrolling through Instagram this morning, and I saw that there's going to be a new podcast with uh, three characters from Boy Meets World. Topanga, Sean, and I think Corey's brother, Eric, are going to host a podcast where they just nice. go back and they review every episode of Boy Meets World as now, you know, adults 25 <laughs> years later. Right. Like that was one of my favorite shows because I was 12 years old when I was watching it. Great show. So, you know, same with Vikings players. Personally, I grew up, I was 13 when Randy Moss took the league by storm. So, right. and Chris Carter. So, those are the guys that I grew up watching and have the biggest emotional attachment to. Oh, that's mm-hmm. fair. Uh, JD via the Scorn Earth app. So, we have a couple show ideas here for, for all of us. Hey, guys, long time listener here. I've been following you guys for, uh, for a while and the past and sorry i think uh jd butchered the sentence here but he's been following the top 25 player rankings from judd and loves it would be too much 
Would it be too much to ask you guys to make a 53-man roster for the Vikings? <laughs> Current players, past players, basically oh. building a championship team with all-time Vikings players, whether it be current or former players. Hmm. That's a great idea. That's we a, should do it next week. That's a big assignment. I like it. I like that. Well, we've put in a lot of the legwork here with your Top your 25, 25 greatest Vikings. Are already, that's half the roster right there. Yep. So we just need to kind of piece together. We need to know, like, okay, how many in each position group? That's what I was going to say. Like, two receivers, three receivers, three probably. No, it's a 53-man roster. So two receivers, tight end. It's a 53-man roster. Oh, I, th- I thought you were talking. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking <laughs> starters. So how how many? So I'm like, wait, I who's getting cut from this year's team? Yeah, Judd? Yeah. Boy, no, Judd. No, sorry, talking, KJ Osborne, you're gone. I thought you were talking starters. <laughs> um, so what, what what would we have then? So we'd, we'd have it's probably five or six receivers. Five receivers. Okay. Like eight offensive linemen. Somewhere there. We should we should do this next week. This sounds Maybe. like okay. a a okay. fun exercise. Absolutely. And do it with only keeping two receivers, but 14 offensive linemen. 14 off- well, you know what? You can never keep enough guards. We found that out. <laughs> Football. Yeah, it's funny. When you look back in Vikings history, they got plenty of Hall of Fame guards. Absolutely. And then the mediocre Gatsby on Twitter said, I want to see a pie chart of blame for the 1998 NFC Championship game. Something different in the summer doldrums. That's another great idea. That's a good one. Historical pie charts of blame and praise. Oh, God, where do we at? I mean, 2009, 1998. We could go back and do... <laughs> I mean, we we could do twins ones, too. 2006 playoff against Oakland. Oh, my God. This is a great idea. I mean, you could do a ton of historical pie charts. Historical pie chart of blame. Okay. Let's let's just make this a weekly thing for, I don't know, for sure the rest of the offseason. The, yeah. ni- the pie chart of blame is the one that stands out the most. It's hard to find historical pie charts of praise for the Vikings because, like, what ga- what ga- what games are you gonna? Well, you could do the, the miracle. Minneapolis miracle, I guess. You could do the miracle, but then of course you have to come back and do the two thousand do the seventeen <laughs> NFC Championship game, which is the pie chart of, as the person said, crapping the bed. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we're definitely gonna add those to the to All the right. talker mix here for sure. Uh, and, and thanks to our friends at Federated for powering this episode too. They've been around for over a hundred years, helping business owners in and around the twin cities and also beyond. So if you want to find a full list of industries, federated protects, go to federatedinsurance.com where it's our business to protect yours. All right. And go check out Judd's top 25 Vikings of all time spread all throughout the week on purple daily. And if you could click the subscribe button on the purple daily YouTube channel, help spread the word about this awesome community of Vikings fans. See you guys.